Back now on the show, Steve Lochte has been a guiding force in his sun swimming career. Now he's about to take on a new challenge with helping swimmers reach their potential. In addition to being the head coach of the Daytona Beach Swim Club, Lochte will also be the head coach at the new men's and women's swim teams at Daytona State College. And Steve's on the phone right now to talk about it. Coach, welcome to the Morning Swim Show. How you doing? Uh, good morning. Thank you for having me. Ah, pleasure to have you on. So, look, Lochte, when you have that last name, it carries a lot of weight in swimming these days. Uh, but you've really been at this coaching thing for a long, long time, haven't you? Uh, about 33 years, yeah. Yeah, that qualifies as a long time. Give, uh, give people an, uh, an idea of just how many people you've, uh, you've coached and, and where you've been so that you know, everybody knows you're more than just Ryan Lochte's dad. Well, you know, I, I started swimming myself, and I swam for the University of Miami back in the early 70s. And when I graduated the University of Miami swimming for them, um, I, I uh, moved back to Rochester area and I uh, coached there in Rochester area with a USA club and a, and a junior college program uh, for about 20 years. And then we moved here in Daytona about 15 years ago when Ryan was uh, 11. And uh, we de redeveloped the program here in the greater Daytona Beach area. And we started out with about 18 swimmers at a B-level uh, competition, and we're up to oh, a little over 300 swimmers and training out of five satellite programs. That's fantastic. So you've, you've built this great club program in Daytona. And it, is this Daytona State College swim team, it sounds like it's, it's almost going to be in conjunction with that. Well, yeah, I mean, when I got back from Beijing after the Olympics, um, the Dr. Ken Sharples, the president of Daytona State, was given uh, a task to redevelop four areas of the college, one being athletics. And they had this beautiful indoor eight-lane, 25-meter, 25 25-yard 25 pool, climate-controlled, but nothing was really being done with it, with the exception of a handful of swimmers per day swimming. So uh, after me getting back from Beijing, it was kind of like the perfect storm, uh, you know, and it kind of all came together. And he brought me in, and he really asked if I would develop a program and also bring the USA Swimming Club with me. Uh, he didn't want me to relinquish that, but just to bring it and, and, and expose it to the college also. So um, that's what we did and, and are doing. Uh, we're, this year we just recruited, um, and we'll be starting a full-scale men's and women's program in late August, along with having another program, a satellite program, for the Daytona Beach Speed program. So what do you envision your, uh, your program, your college program, being like? I mean, do you want it to be just sort of an extension of the club team? Do you want to, I mean, obviously the kids got to focus strong on the academics and going to school. I mean, how, how do you envision this? Well, I, I envision it's a great opportunity for um, USA swimmers to have another level of competition to be exposed to. I, I, I see it as an extension of my club, but it, it's also uh, an extension of someone's career. Uh, giving them an opportunity to compete at a collegiate level. I mean, how many days now do you hear colleges adding swimming programs, and here we're adding both men and women? Um, by all means, academics is primary, but it gives them an outlet to, to some of these athletes to actually train for another two years before they springboard into a, a larger D1 school. Right now we are a state college. We have 11 bacterial degree academic programs and we are applying to become a d1 athletic program but as you know that's going to take a number of years of process so right now we're swimming in a two-year situation njcaa and it will give these kids an opportunity to train get become a little more proficient in swimming and springboard into another major university. That's great because a lot of times I've heard when swimmers, you know, they're not quite ready to go to a D1 school and they'll go to a, a junior college or something like that. Um, you know, they don't have coaches that have the experience that you do to really coach them up to that D1 level. So this might be a unique experience for them. Well, yeah, and, and, and my, that's my job. My job is not to, you know, my job is to prepare that athlete, that student athlete, for his next two years and put him in the right situation 
and and not to try to get him into a situation where he's over his head academically or athletically and get the right fit. And that's really the key to, to make successful swimmers. You know, a happy swimmer is a fast swimmer, and that's the key is to, to graduate them and get them into the right setting. Coach, we've got a couple of viewer emails that, uh, with some questions for you. I'm going to send it over to Jeff Cummings, our associate producer. He has the questions. Sure. Hi, Steve. We have a couple of viewer questions. The first one's regarding your club team. Are there any up-and-comers who could be the next Ryan Lochte? Um, uh, quite honestly, uh, yes. I have a couple of them that are coming out, and as uh, you know, I converse quite frequently. Actually, I was on the phone right before this with Greg Troy, University of Florida, and Greg and I are close friends. But we have a, a couple of them that are in the water that are identical to Ryan. We have a female that um, I swear to God is is it looks like Ryan in the water, stroke wise. She has that soft touch, and uh, he, of course, Troy's already got his eye on her, and along with a few other D1 schools. But there are yeah two or three that we're looking really healthy for for 2012. And our second question for you, Steve, is who are your coaching mentors? My coaching mentors are individuals like Mark Schubert. I've I've sat back and. You know, good coaches actually uh, take uh, ideas from other people. Uh, George Haynes, uh, Paul Bergen, um, actually Doc Councilman, and Mark Schubert, uh, I have watched in, in action. I've listened to how they work with their athletes. Don Gambrell, uh, Richard Quick, I've, I've watched them work with athletes, and then I, I put, put things into thought and try to come out with my own style. Hey, Coach, Peter Bush here again. If you will, reflect a little bit on um, last year in the Olympics and watching Ryan. It was, it was really, really neat to watch you in the stands watching your son. And I, I honestly think, you, you know, Ryan won a lot of fans by watching just how emotional you got, you know, watching him swim. Well, um, yeah, I guess being a coach all my life and being involved in swimming all my life and then having all my children being involved in swimming and of course in my coaching career always getting so close but not not getting there and then having your own son reaching the pinnacle um you know it's just it, it's the great admiration of what he had to go through and but bottom line is i'm his dad and i love him dearly and uh it was one of the more prouder moments that I've had. Do you uh, do you still replay that 200 backstroke in your mind and and the finish and and looking up at the scoreboard, just kind of the realization of it all? Um, no, I don't really replay that as much as I replay you know certain other things that have made me proud of Ryan uh, when parents or kids have come up to me and. And, and tell me about things that Ryan has done for their family. Um, I remember those things more than just the, the, the finish of that 200 backstroke. It was kind of a blur. It was kind of all uh, kind of a blur for me. If I can't really remember anything very distinctive. But um, little things like when a family meets me in a hallway of a, a hotel and just explains to me what my son did, you know, two hours before at Olympic trials about sitting down on the floor and having his picture taken with their five-year-old daughter. That, that more to me than, than winning the gold. Well, you know, but, I, I swam for my dad for a couple of years in college. Obviously, I wasn't nearly at the level of your son. Uh, but, I mean, for me, I wanted to have success as much for my dad as I did for myself. Did Ryan say anything to you afterwards? Um, you know, like, I, I just wanted to make you proud, Dad, or, or anything that really uh, that really struck you? Yeah, um, he didn't have to. Um, we're, we're, Ryan and I are, are very close. I knew what he, he felt. He knows what I felt. Um, it's something that's unspoken. Um, that's how close we are. I know he, he won that um, for himself, but he also won it for his immediate family, his sisters, his brother, his mom, and myself, and, uh, and definitely his grandfather. So um, he, um, he didn't have to say anything. 
I know I said one thing to him when he was reaching up after the award ceremony. I, and I've always told him that, uh, that he's good. But I said, to be great, you've got to win a gold medal and break a world's record on the same day, which he did. Yeah, that was, uh, that was something else. Coach, thank you so much for joining us. Good luck in your new adventure. And uh, say hi to Ryan for us. We hope to get him on the show real soon. Cool. All right. Thank you very much for having me, and have a great day. All right. Thanks, Steve. All righty. Thanks. That's, Bye -bye. that's our show for today. Thanks to Steve Lochte for joining us.